If you love Baltimore sports, you'll love WNST.net. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome in. It is Monday Night Live at High Tops Backstage Grill and Timonium on WNST. First of all, give it up for your host, number 51, Mr. Brendan Ivadejo. I always like this part of the show because I always allow you to... Because this is the fun part. You see how you guys interact. I'm calling him the McPhenom. Has anybody adapted that yet? Is anybody taking McPhenom? We already got a phenom on the team, though. We already got a phenom. Ellerby. Oh, Ellerby's the phenom. Ellerby's the phenom. So, so what do you have for your special guest that you brought out here tonight? I'll let you introduce him. I mean, he, he doesn't really have no nickname. We call him McFeefe. We call him Fifi. We call him Mike Fee. He's kind of country, you know. But, um, I mean, he's just a gem, though, you know. Everybody you know, was wondering, you know, what we're doing with our draft picks and who was going to step up and who was really going to show up this year. And on the defensive side of the ball, I think, you know, for being a fifth-round draft pick, I think he's definitely the steal of the draft. He's our, he's our best young young player on the team. And, um, man, I can't say, I can't really say enough about this, this guy just because he comes to work. And especially when he gets to the games, he's going to ball so hard. And uh, just Pernell McPhee's a great young guy. He's got a bright future ahead of him. So give him a nice welcome, everybody. Give it up. Man, it's a, uh, you know, it's a wild... A couple months ago, you were sitting around. You didn't know if there was going to be a league. You didn't know when it was going to start, when you could get in and show these guys that you knew how to play. From there, you've become this sort of sack machine, Pernell McPhee. It's been a wild ride for the last three or four months. Well, well that call just had a chip on my shoulder. Uh, being hungry, you know, being hungry, you know, going in the draft, going in the draft, thinking I was going to be a um, second or third round draft pick. I ended up being a uh, fifth round draft pick. We got to switch mics real quick. Pernomic Fee's mic not working at the moment. I, you were giving it such a great answer to, and nobody heard you, and so I feel terrible about that. Uh, but again, try one more time. Tell everybody what it's like to have accomplished everything that you've accomplished in just this short amount of time. Uh, just going in, uh, being focused with a chip on my shoulder, you know, because going in, I was a, um, I, w I was thinking that I was going to go in in the second or third round, but I ended up falling to the fifth round. So I, I had a chip on my shoulder and, and being hungry and, and staying humble, and I just came in and, and started playing a really good ball. You know, it's it's wild. You say all those things because every time somebody says, yeah, the fifth round pick, this is a guy that, who knows, they might. Did you have an idea yourself that you were going to be able to do what you've done thus far? Did you already, or were you sort of confined to, wherever I get on the field, that's nice, and I'll make it. But did you get this? any idea that you could be able to do this much? I mean, I, I, not trying to be cocky. I, I, I had an idea because I know what kind of heart I have. And I know what type of personality I have. And I know I love the game of football. So I know coming in that I was on a team with a lot of good veterans. I was going to have to come and step up and be, be the young guy. You know, I do have to say, going into camp, he was, he had a quiet confidence about him. Something that, you know, I didn't really see in the other rookies. The other rookies were kind of bright-eyed and kind of tr trying to figure out where they're going to fit in. But McPhee was just like, okay, just give me a chance. Just let me do my thing. Just right. sit back and watch, and I'll show you. And every time he got the opportunity in the preseason, and, and so far he's been doing it throughout the season, he stepped up, and he's been making plays the whole time. So people are really starting to notice now, but if you paid attention closely, he's been doing it the whole time. But now, how much easier is it to do it on a, when you have a veteran defense? And I guess maybe it works both ways. It's hard to get spots on a veteran defense to get in. But how much does it help to have guys like Bia around, guys that have been around for a long time that you can learn from as you try to make that impact as a rookie? I mean, that, that, that helps a lot. And it's real important because, you know, sometimes... Rookies get down if they ain't doing good, if they ain't living up to their expectations. So, you know, you got guys like B.A. Ray, Corey Redding, or Lowe Nottie, like, they'll, they'll, they'll be the ones who try to keep you up. And if you need help with anything, they'll be the ones who try to help you in all phases. Like, if you don't know certain plays or whatever, during the, during the game, and it's going fast, they'll help you line up, they'll put you in a position where you can make plays. Bia, can you sense it from a young player when a guy first shows up? Can you sort of know immediately if this is going to work, if he's going to be a guy that can contribute early on? I mean, you don't you don't really know. Um, you know, that's the coach's job to put them in the right position to be successful. And, um, you know, just like I said earlier before, in, in training camp and, and so far throughout the season, he's been, he's been quietly doing his thing. And I think the thing that's so good about him, his best attribute is that He's a big guy, but he's also really fast and agile. Sure. So, you know, one, one time he's going to power you, then the next time he's going to out-quick you, then the next time he's going to quick you and then power you, or power you, then quick you. So he's got so many moves in his arsenal. And it's like now, when you watch when you watch Ravens film, 
Um, the opposing offensive line, they're like, okay, we got to take this guy serious because he's one of their best pass rushers for sure. You can't just take Sizzle serious. You got to take, you know, him, Haloti, Corey Redding, Paul Kruger. It's like you got a handful of guys now that are like, th there's no letdown. You know, we got five guys that are just going to beat you in every way possible. Now, Brunel, obviously you had no no OTAs, no off season where you could be around the facility. How prepared did you feel when you went into training camp at the end of July? Was it a situation where you just said, I don't really know what's going on right now, but I'm just going to do what I've always done and just try to get after the quarterback? I mean, I, I really was prepared mentally, not physically, because um, I just say I know my motor and I know my heart and I know, I know my will and I know what I love to do. So when, I, when, they, when they called me up and I had to come in, I knew once I get in that playbook and learn the playbook and get around vets that I was going to be okay. Um, I just went on the field, the practice field, and went out of show. At what point did you start to feel it slow down where you said, okay, I'm starting to figure this out. I'm not just going on my raw talent. I really understand how this defense works and uh, just take off from there. That's a hard question to answer because, I mean, it's still fast right now. But, you know, it, it becomes slow down because I know the plays better than I did before. But I mean, there's a lot of great guys out there. The offensive line is going to run this. And it kind of fast right now still. Pretty good offensive line to go up against every day, right? Yes, sir. No doubt, no doubt. Give it up for Pernell McPhee. He is the McPhee. Some quick... If you love Baltimore sports, you'll love WNST.net.